What's up, Long Beach? And Lakewood. It's Mike. And JJ. Of LBPostSports.com. And in the bowels of Veterans Memorial Stadium, a battle for more league supremacy. Well, more than supremacy, just representation almost. Polly with the state record 80 consecutive league wins coming into this. Lakewood hadn't beat them since 1982. That's two years before I was born. Wow. And uh, they've played football against each other so many times that both these teams have about 15 pregame rituals to get through before we can even strap the helmets on. Every single one of them worth filming, though. Yeah, definitely. We, we could have got about 10 minutes of B-roll of this if we wanted to. The quarterback's probably the biggest story, though. Chris Leachman, his second start. Jesse Scroggins looses a goose as he takes Lakewood back against Pauly once again. Jesse Lucy Goosey Scroggins might have to become a nickname. Probably the coolest storyline of this, this is the second consecutive game between these two teams with 11,000 plus in attendance, people. Way to go, Long Beach and Lakewood. You're part of this whole tradition and pageantry and everything. But hey, let's just play some football. Pauly wins the toss, gets the ball first, but on the first play, they do exactly what both teams didn't want to do all night long. Yeah, that's running back Michael Simmons laying it on the carpet there. Credit Lakewood's Ryan Cummings with this trip, and no surprise, Justin, big game Utupo, number eight right there with the recovery to give it back to number 15, Jesse Scroggins with a short porch. Yeah, you don't want to give that explosive offense the ball that early, that close to the end zone, but deep lock, Pauly locking it up early, forcing the four and out, but when Pauly got the ball back, the Red Swarm and Lakewood just as stiff. Yeah, the defenses took over early. Offense is kind of nervy, uh, a lot of false starts, a lot of mistakes. So Pauly gives the ball back to Lakewood on the 50 and on the first play of this drive, handoff to Ali Long. He gone. He is very much gone down that right sideline. 50 yard touchdown, kind of play Pauly didn't want to give up, especially early, Lakewood on the board first. Now Lakewood had the ball enough in the first half to put up the points that they have this season, but that passing game just a little bit off and on the other side for Polly, it was the Corey Westbrook show. Yeah, Corey chewing up the ground, chewing up the clock, and uh, doing his best Herschel Dennis impersonation here. Get down! The run of his career. Good on you, Corey. That's a heck of a jaunt. Polly needed it. Gets him down into that Lakewood red zone inside the 20 there so okay. they can pitch to Kalen Clay, who does his best LaDainian Tomlinson impersonation. Nice pass. Ernest Petway, the tight end, gets the catch on the one, which sets up this. Chris Leachman, the quarterback. <laughs> Trust us, he punched it on that one. 7-7, seven, seven, all tied up. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got a football game. Now, the passing game for the Lancers did pick up on that next drive, but it was playmaking from Jesse Scroggins. What a throw right there off the wrong foot. Finding guys short, letting them make the play. They get the field goal attempt, however, the dreaded double thump. Ryan, go forth and block that kick. Yeah, paulie has been doing that all year. They've uh, they've recorded blocks in most games this season, and giving it back to Corey means, ooh, and Kalen Clay doing it all, too. I had to put that in there. Yeah, well, <laughs> when someone jumps over someone, we like to put it in the highlight. That's, that's what we call effort. But Josiah Blandon, you want to talk about effort. Each catch harder than the last. He had four for 72, I believe, all for first downs today. Yeah, not a lot of catches, but each one of them huge. However, on third down, Leachman looking in the end zone for Blanton, can't find him, so they go for the field goal, but you hear the whistles and you hear the boink. So they move him back five yards for the false start. They go for it on fourth down, Kalen Clay. What a catch. Obviously, you gotta hustle up to the ball. Leachman clocks it, so with .6 seconds left, no field goal, we're going for it. Speaking of Watch this one carefully. A lot of conversation from the refs after this. They will eventually rule this a touchdown. Now, looking at the Fox replay on this sideline on their little monitor, it did initially look from the side like he wasn't in, but no replays in high school football. He did make the second effort. It looked like maybe he did get in. Never know. It's 14-7 at halftime. But coming out of the half, you kind of expected Lakewood to play a little bit better. They, they always do. They are a second-half team. And Donald West gets it started right here with a whoop, nice little return into Polly Jack Rabbit territory. Terrence Woods around the corner, and then Scroggins looking for Poe, finding Poe in the end zone. Darius Poe with the touchdown pass, but as will become a theme of this game, ladies and gentlemen, ref calls the penalty on the Lanchers, bring it back, but they do get another shot into the corner. Yeah, Scroggins kept going back to Anderson after he dropped a few passes in the first half, but if you keep going back to the talent, boom, bound to make the play. Hit any tree enough times, you're bound to fall over. Lakewood comes within one point. They do miss the extra point, so at this point it's 14-13 Poly. And then the defenses took over and just banged heads. Yeah, it was uh, both defenses taking over. Polly's defense, obviously, also a second-half team. I guess it seems like most good high school teams are that way. 
But Lakewood, too, I mean, it was, like you said, a clash of the titans in the second half. So when you're clashing like that, you need a playmaker. And once again, 1-5 comes through. Yeah, he had a couple of these plays. Oh, oh. When you get that play, you know it's your night. And Scroggins had two or three of them in this game. Fourth quarter, first play, fourth down. That's a heck of a throw. That is a heck of a catch from Ron Lewis. Fingertip snap down on the 10. Two plays later, around the end, into the end zone. Terrence Woods walks it in. You go for two, though, right? You have to go for two to take the seven-point lead. Well, Leaky Pipes would be happy because they do indeed go for two. Option left. Nobody's going to touch him. Allie Long takes it in for the two-point conversion. 21-14 Lancers. And obviously, the fans in red love it. Corey Westbrook getting things started. Things yep. look good initially, but penalty brings it back. Yep, and then a yard short, so they have to punt it back. Kevin Anderson making a cutback upfield. Sealing the game here with a touchdown. To Going to the, scores. to the tilt. Oh, no, come on back, fellas. We got a flag right there. Right there, says the ref, just in case you missed it. Four plays later, swing of momentum. Throw the ball behind your receiver. You know something weird is going to happen. Ryan Goforth with the reception. Mac obviously has some stuff to say to the refs about this one. So they actually end up bringing it back where the where Ryan Goforth picked up the ball. So four and a half minutes left. Down by seven. You need a big play. Who are you going to? Goldilocks, Josiah Blandon with another big catch for a first down. But that was, that was really the beginning of the end because on first down here, Corey Westbrook gets stopped on second down. False start penalty puts you back a little bit. And then on third down, play of the game. Screen pass to Westbrook and Justin Utupo goes zero to watch, tackle in about two seconds. Watch the closing speed. By Unbelievable. Utupo. That's what puts you in a gold helmet at Notre Dame next year. On the fourth down play, a lot going on. But just a, one too many moves there yeah, for Polly. Yeah. Doesn't really work out. Lakewood gets the ball back. Polly does, does get it back. One more chance. This is the last play of the game. Corey Westbrook, desperation. He goes into the Lakewood sidelines. Not to be. Soak it up, Lakewood fans. Soak it all up. Somehow, incredibly, the season rolls on. Lakewood will be at Cabrillo next week, and polly has got a bye before taking on Milliken. Don't forget, folks, this is just week six, and if last year showed us anything, it's that we can see these two teams again in the playoffs. You want high school football? You come to us, lbpostsports.com. We got it.